Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello dear learners, I am Dr. Himani Singh, working as an assistant professor in Institute of Business Management, GLA University, Mathura. The course which I am taking care of is Professional Communication for Managers and I welcome you all to the session 2 which is on Communication Barriers or Distortions. In the last session, as we discussed about the basics of communication, professional communication, why we need to study this as a subject, what is the relevance of this course. In this session, I am going to talk more about and make you people understand that what we mean by communication distortions, that means communication problems or barriers at different levels at your workplace. Also, I will be talking about that how or what strategies you as budding managers can take in order to remove those barriers of communication at your workplace. Not just this, towards the end, I have also planned where we are going to discuss seven C's for effective communication and these seven C's are going to help you in design your message in such a manner that you will be not committing any errors while communicating with the people around you. So now let's begin with the session. Words are singularly the most powerful force available to humanity. I hope all of you are going to agree with this. In fact, in the last session, I highlighted this point that communication is power and the people who tend to excel in communication skills, they are the one who can exercise power over others. Yes, when we talk about communication, either through words or through non-verbal communication, it becomes one of the most powerful force available to you and yes you can choose words in such a manner or rather I should say that you can use this force either for constructive purposes or for destructive purposes. When I say constructively yes you might be using words of encouragement, words positive words of thank you, request and so on and you can make your relationship more impactful and more effective with the other party. Contrary to this, you can also use this power for destructive purposes wherein you can make use of words for despair, for demotivating others, for hurting others, for harming others. So yes, if we say that yes, words are the singularly most powerful force which is available to you and you can use either constructively or destructively which is the two aspects of communication skills and that depends on you that how you are going to use it as very appropriately quoted by Yehuda Burke. Now, I'll start this session with a small example. I hope with these pictures you are able to get something in your mind. Yes, this is a recent case, controversial case which took place in 2021 only. Wherein Fab India, they came up with a beautiful collection with the name Jashne Rivas during the Diwali season. Yes, in fact, the idea behind coming up with this collection was to help customers find good clothes during the festive season 
and yes, they named it Jashne Rivas. That is in fact the most important aspect and I hope most of you are aware of this fact that this particular terminology that is Jashne Rivas got into huge controversy. Do you know why? Because some of the so called people from Hindu community, all my regards to every community, but yes, somehow they came up that this particular word is not suitable to celebrate a Hindu festival. Really? Again, Fab India, they came up with a very beautiful name, they came up with a very beautiful collection and their intentions was also very clear, they just wanted to give tribute to Indian culture and that is why they called this, they called their collection the Jashne Rivas. But what happened, it was being distorted, the communication, the message which Fab India wanted to give to the people, it got distorted. It was misinterpreted by the people and people said that how can Fab India use a Muslim terminology or a Urdu terminology for celebrating an Indian festival, Hindu festival particularly. So see, this is a simple, simple message which I want to tell you that might be Fab India was coming up with right intentions, but it was being communicated by different people based on their personality, their perceptions. I am not saying that they are wrong, they are equally not wrong because they have their own personality trait, they have their own perception, but somehow the way they wanted to communicate, it did not reach to the masses. So this is how distortion occurs, when we communicate our ideas, when we share our thoughts, our feelings, our emotions with the people around us. And as I am saying that you are budding managers, you will be dealing with people, lots and lots of people, whether it is employees or it is customers, government and so on. So you need to look after this particular thing, that how and what strategy you should adopt that your message should not be distorted. So, I just want to explain this mechanism with a small picture. The very first figure which talks about the basic communication process wherein we have a sender. The sender wants to communicate something to the receiver. He has simply asked, hi Alfred, how is your sister? And the receiver, he just replied back, oh, she is fine, she just had a baby. I think that is very clear. Whatever was being asked, it was being interpreted in the similar manner and the receiver replied back in the same manner. And the communication process was good enough. But now look into the second picture. When I say second picture, we do have sender, we do have receiver. Similar question is being asked by the sender that hi Alfred, how is your sister? But somewhere or the other noise is present and this noise is distorting the message which sender wanted to communicate to the receiver and receiver is not able to get what sender was asking and see what he is replying. He is replying, oh I am fine, I went kicking today. Is this the right communication? Do not you see that some kind of distortion or barrier was there between sender and receiver? Yes, the noise in this particular figure is not only the physical or the mechanical noise. It can be anything, it can be any social factor, psychological factor and so on. So it can be anything. Now moving further. Barriers, yes, that is the topic. Barriers are circumstances, circumstances, I am highlighting this term, as well as the obstacles that keeps people or things apart or prevents the communication or brings some kind of noise in between. So communication distortions, you can say 
that they are the circumstances or the situations or the obstacles that tend to distort the message which sender wants to send to the receiver or which receiver wants to give feedback. It can be anything. Noise can be present anywhere as we discussed in the communication process. Now moving forward towards the different barriers. Communication barriers, yes. I have categorized somewhere around into five major categories. To begin with, we have physical and mechanical barriers. The second category talks about language barrier, which arises out of language differences. The third category is more about socio-psychological barriers. And fourth is about organizational barriers. And the fifth one is personal barriers or individual barriers. Yes, they are the barriers in the broad sense. I will be discussing all these barriers one by one in detail. I'll be beginning my session with this that is physical or mechanical barrier. The very first point, noise. I hope you can see in this picture, the picture one. Two people are sitting. And when I say they are sitting, the distance between them is not too much. Fine. So whatever person A, let's say this is person A, this is person B. So whatever person A is telling to person B, person B can listen. It's audible because the distance is not too much. But might be possible that whatever A is communicating to B, B is not able to hear or understand what A is telling due to one reason that is the waves behind it. Might be possible the waves are too noisy, they are making so much of noise and that's why person A is not able to communicate his message to person B. Similarly, in the situations, in our situations as well as at workplace, for example, you are discussing an important strategy, an important strategy with your manager, but in the backdrop, your workers are shouting some slogans or they are talking too loudly or they are making some noise of music or anything else. And just because of that reason, it's not that you didn't want it to communicate or the or your manager didn't want to listen. It is just the noise in the backdrop due to which you are not able to make the other person understand your message. So this is how noise tends to act as a barrier between sender and receiver. The second physical or mechanical barrier which I want to cover here is distance. Yes, I am talking about the physical distance. You can see into the second picture. Yes, there are two people who are standing and yes, there is a big wall between them and might be possible they are somewhere far away. One is standing at one end of the corner and the other one is at the other end of the corridor. What he is able to speak just because the distance is too much, physical distance is too much due to which either A is not audible to B or B is not audible to A. So this is also a sheer example of physical or mechanical barrier. Now it can be that you as a sender, you are standing at the fourth floor, first floor of your building and your manager is standing at the fourth floor of your building and if you want to communicate, it might be possible you are not able to communicate just because there is huge distance between you and your manager. So that is more about physical distance, right? Now coming on to the third aspect, that's the time. Yes, dear learners, time is also a mechanical barrier or a physical barrier rather I should say. Now, when I am saying physical barrier or mechanical barrier, take example that you are dealing with some of the client who is sitting in US. 
take the time difference. Yes, you are in India and your client is in US. So there is, there exists time difference, share time difference. You want to communicate some problem to your uh, client, right? And you want that it should be done at that moment only, but might be possible here it is morning and at that time, the time zone is different in US. So time is acting as a barrier. You wanted to communicate, your client wants to listen to you. It's not that, that you both are not communicating. You have ample technology to communicate, right? Distance is there, but yes, you have ample technology. You can uh, go through, uh, go with video conferencing or any other medium, right? So it's not the distance which is acting as a barrier. What is acting as a barrier is time. Just because of the time differences, you are not able to communicate what you want to communicate to your client. Apart from that, yes, another example can also be taken that uh, as a manager, you want to give your presentation in front of your top management and there are 10 more people who are going to give their presentation in front of the management. Now, at what time you are giving? If you are giving it in the morning hours, yes, people are fresh. They are happy to listen to the uh, speaker, but when it comes into the evening or just after lunch timings and all, they are not ready, they are not happy to listen, right? So somewhere it is just the time difference which is acting as a barrier. Now moving further, I am going to highlight another physical or mechanical barrier which is information overload. Too much of information being shared at a time. Now, when we talk about our brain capacity, people do say, you know, I am genius, I can um, memorize everything. I completely agree to it. But if I talk in general cases, right, human capacity or brain capacity is somewhere or the other limited in terms of that we do have certain constraints, right? We cannot take too many things at a time. So if, now take example from your classes, from your classroom. If a faculty used to teach you a lot, too much of information, right? For stretching hours, for like uh, eight hours, uh, Hindi is being taught, then after just after that, maths is being taught to you, then again, English is being taught to you, then science is being taught to you, and like this, eight complete packed hours. You and your faculty, and your faculty is continuously sharing information with you, yes. Do you really think that you are going to take up every information? No. Why? You didn't want it to take it? No, that's not the reason. You wanted to take it, but just because too much of information is being shared with you in that time span, due to which you are not able to concentrate. You are not able to pay attention due to which communication barrier exists might be possible your faculty is teaching you marvelous but somewhere since morning you have taken up four other lectures and now your brain is exhausted you are not happy to take any more information in your brain so yes information overload acts as a barrier moving further denotations and connotations yes i would say we do have some words which have their literal meaning. There are certain words which are not having their literal meaning. For example, if I ask you to bring a table from outside, of course you are going to bring a table only. You are not going to get me a chair. Yes, might be possible. You might ask me that what kind of a table? Is it a wooden or a steel table? It's a round or a square table? But for sure, you are going to bring a table only. But there are words which are not known for their literal meanings. For example, if I say this pen is cheap, what do you mean by this? Might be possible, one thought is coming in your mind that this pen is of less price. That's why I am saying that it is cheap. Some person might come with an interpretation that this is having low plastic quality. That's why it is cheap. Some person can come up that it is not being used by 
the top notch people of the organization that's why i am saying it is cheap so see one word that's cheap can be interpreted in different pattern in different manner so what it is it is a barrier yes it is a barrier so there are certain words which are known by their literal meaning but there are certain words which are not known by their literal meaning it can be again interpreted in different manner as per my own thinking as per my own perception so see dear learners these are some of the physical or mechanical barrier you want to send the information receiver wants to receive the information then what's the problem the problem is physical or mechanical barrier which arises either out of noise or distance or time or overloaded information and the words which are not known by their literal meanings moving further i'll be talking about language or semantic barrier now when i say language or semantic barrier yes there are certain times when the barrier or the message is being distorted just because of the language differences or the way we interpret language in our own manner if i talk about language barrier unclear message yes just because the language is different or you mean something in your language and i mean the similar word in something different way that means message is not clear it is ambiguous message where somewhere or the other we cannot accurately interpret that what the sender wants to send us the clarity is somewhere missing either the terminology is something different either the language is different for example might be possible i am comfortable speaking english and i am doing business uh, with a french person and he do not know english he know only french then the message which is going to be transferred between both of us is going to have this particular parameter that's unclear fine so that is what is unclear message moving forward yes the other parameter or you can say the other sub category under the language barrier is faulty translation how faulty translation as just now i said that i am dealing with a french person he doesn't know english i doesn't know uh, french right so for sure we might be having some interpreter with us some translator with us might be possible that that poor <laughs> translator is also not equally efficient or might be possible that he is able to only translate the verbal expressions not the non verbal one right see there are two ways i am telling someone i am really happy to meet you fine there is one way i am telling i am really happy to meet you two situations i am really happy to meet you i am really happy to meet you which one is more expressive or where you will be thinking ki yes this is real this is real expression i guess situation 1 so yes the problem with the translators might be this that they are able to translate the verbal words but they are not able to translate the non verbal gestures which tends to end up being into faulty translations apart from this another sub point in this language or semantic barrier is technical words or jargons technical words or jargons right what happens is that many a times people tend to use very sophisticated words when they communicate because they want to flaunt or they just want to uh, make themselves believe or make themselves appear like as if they are very knowledgeable or they are uh, very comfortable in having a very good vocab right so they end up using very sophisticated language actually that's a wrong way of expression you should never use technical words or jargons i'll come to the jargons first i'll explain you about the technical words right 
if in case you really want to use technical words make sure that you are using something or you are taking help from something some material or something like that wherein you should provide it to the receiver first that see these are the words which this particular message which I am going to uh, translate to you will come with these words so these this is the explanation of this word then it's fine go for it but unnecessarily where you know that the other person doesn't know the meaning and you are still using technical words sophisticated words sorry that's really not the right way of expression it never shows that you are intelligent or you are sophisticated it in fact leads to distortion in the communication the other person is not going to interpret anything so somewhere it's not good apart from that as i said jargons yes uh, when we work in the organization we tend to use some commonly uh, used words which are known as jargons which we commonly use we are not going to use the uh, exact word for the same purpose now see when some new joinee is coming and still i am using those jargons with that person that's not correct for example if i am saying asa I, I want this work asap might be possible that the other person does not know what we mean by asap i am putting an attachment in the email and i am writing pfa might be possible the other person is not comfortable that what we mean by PFA so we should never use these things avoid using technical words sophisticated language jargons when it comes to communicating with the people I'm not saying that you should never use it but you should never use them with the people who are not comfortable with those words if you believe that your audience can understand those sophisticated words those technical words without explaining them go ahead i'm not stopping you for, from that but my point of conversation here is that unnecessarily you should never use technical words or sophisticated words so that was about the language or the semantic barriers moving forward i will be talking about another socio psychological barriers that is difference in perception as the picture says it very clearly for example this is person a and this is person b if i see from the person a side it is six and when i see from the person's b side that is nine anyone is incorrect no they both are correct they both are absolutely correct there is no wrong information provided to them what's that how then it becomes a distortion why these two people are shouting and quarreling as they seem to be from their non-verbal gestures because they are communicating things from their perspective from their perception and they are not able to understand that why the other party is saying that it is nine it is not six a is not able to understand this and similarly b is not able to understand that what a wants to communicate so the problem here is difference in perception your perception is different towards a particular object situation person thing and so on and that's how communication barrier exists for example you want to bring the change inside the organization you might perceive that change as a big opportunity but at the same time trust me your some of your employees might see that change as a very negative thing so why why this happened it might be that you are thinking from the perspective of long term perspective you are being visionary leader whereas that employee is talking about short term benefits he is thinking that oh i now i need to go for training now i need to learn new things now i need to go out of my comfort zone so that's his perception of that change so see similar situation but you do have different perception and that's why you are not able to communicate him that yes change is good so this is what is about difference in perception and this is a psychological socio psychological barrier which exists in us as we all are humans it does exist apart from this inattention inattention is one aspect 
might be that it is just that your mind is preoccupied with some other thoughts due to which you are not able to pay attention to what the other person is saying. In attention is this, that message is there, there is no noise, there is no distance, there is no time barrier. It is just that somewhere or the other your mind is preoccupied. For example, you are into a meeting, right, and some business plan is being shared. You really wanted to listen to that, but somehow it just came into your mind that you today you need to take your father to a doctor, right? He was having his appointment and somehow you just start thinking of it that how you will be planning, how you will be going, how you will be commuting. So what happened? That just because of that inattention because your mind is preoccupied with some other thought due to which you are not able to focus on what is being shared to you. Next in line is closed mind. You have put a lock on your mind, right? You have just closed it. Mental block lies here, right? You have just thought that I am not going to listen. Take example of your classroom. Many a times you have taken up this thing. I don't want to listen to this particular faculty and you don't listen. So communication stops there and barrier is there. Why the barrier existed? Because of your closed mindedness. Again, in a meeting, in a boardroom, someone is discussing some great business plan. You don't like that person, right? I'm not talking about trust. I'm simply saying that you might not be sharing good relationship with that person and you say that, sorry, I don't want to listen to what he is saying. At that moment only, you have just put a mental block here and things are not going to be communicated. Might be possible he is having a wonderful change plan. He is expressing it very beautifully. He is justifying the things, but it will never come to you. Another point when we talk in terms of close mindedness, trust, right? So trust is another important aspect. When we don't trust other party, we don't listen. We don't communicate, right? If I am having this thing in my mind that yes, I don't trust him or her, I am not going to communicate things and communication stops there itself. Barrier comes there. In connection to this, another socio-psychological barriers are premature evaluation. I'll show you one thing. What's this? Yes, a triangle, a circle, a square. Really? Have you been ta taught like this in your previous classes? What I have been taught is a triangle is this, wherein all the three sides are proper. A circle is like this. A square is like this, right? Ignore the margins and all. But yes, so what we tend to do, premature evaluation. We tend to evaluate the things as they are not, right? We tend to complete the closure. We tend to close the picture ourselves. And that's how we make a frame. We make we tend to evaluate the situation. This is what is premature evaluation. I just want to know that my employee is not coming to office today. What I'm saying? Oh, yes, he is not a hardworking person. He never wants to work or give his work on time. He is, that's why taking leave because a lot of pressure is going on here. So what I did, I, just complicated a simple situation. He just took a leave. Might be possible he is having some genuine reason. Did I connect with him? No. What I did? I evaluated the things on my own that why he has taken leave. Why he or she has taken leave. Right. That's wrong. That's communication barrier. Not just this. Apart from that, resistance to change is also a barrier. We tend to resist. Why we tend to resist? Because we don't want to come out of our comfort zone. And just because we don't want to come out of our comfort zone, we resist a lot. And the moment this resistance came, communication barrier exists. 
this is a socio psychological barrier which is which starts from your societal aspects your psychological aspects also cultural differences that person a is bowing down and person b is shaking his hand cultural difference he is not understanding that why he is bowing down what's the matter and he is not understanding that why he is offering a hand to him when he is greeting him with a bow so out of cultural differences also barrier exist that's why i told you in session 1 that we really need to study because you as managers will be dealing with the people around the world so you really need to understand that how cultural differences impacts the communication pattern the last socio psychological barrier is stereotyping what is stereotyping any idea coming across your mind yes when we tends to perceive an individual based on his belongingness to a particular group when we tend to perceive a person based on his belongingness to a particular group now that group can be based on age gender uh, nation culture religion and so on fine and that's how communication barrier exists why because i have perceived that individual based on his belongingness to a particular group i am not communicating with that person i am communicating with a person because he belongs to a particular group do you really think that all mathematicians are intelligent but that's a common notion because this person belongs to the group who are mathematicians so they are going to be somewhere intelligent see i am not disregarding anyone it is just that we have preconceived notions females cannot do physical work what's that that's a stereotype wherein we tend to relate each and every person who belongs to the female fraternity they cannot go for physical work no it's not that so yes communication barrier exists due to the stereotypes which we hold in our mind so these were some of the socio psychological barriers moving further i will be talking about the organizational barriers the very first organizational barrier is organizational structure as in session 1 i discussed this point that somewhere or the other the way our organizations are evolving the structures they are becoming more complex right and every day we are coming up with new ways of doing the work new patterns of doing the work new networks for doing the work just because such a complex system is there right we tend to come up with some rigid structures also where in flexibility is zero there is no flexibility and when there is no flexibility the communication pattern tends to be hindered a lot not just this in fact the status relationship right when i say status relationship somewhere when we talk about status holding by holded by a person in the organization for example if in your organization there is a clear distinction between different status that means the top management is top management he never comes and talk to the middle or the lower level management and similarly lower level management can also not go directly to the top level management strict status relationship or status quo is being maintained now in such situations what happens in such situations people are not going to communicate to each other and when they are not going to communicate distortions are going to be there if as a top management person what do you believe about your people about your middle level management if you are not communicating just because of status relationship that oh i hold this status how can i go and ask help from my junior or how can i go and ask or take a new plan from my junior right other way around also so if that strict status relationship is there you will be finding that communication barrier exists see learners when we talk about organizational barriers these are the barriers which are actually imposed by the organization only not by you 
not by situation, it is by the organization. And when I say organization, yes, it is. See, structure, who made? The organization, right? Status relationship, strict status relationship, who made this system? The organizational aspect. And not just this, the last one, which talks about rigid. Yes, I should add this word, rigid rules and regulations. Because that is, in fact, the most important aspect of rules and regulations. If you have rigid rules and regulations, it leads to barriers. It leads to distortions certain times. Because in an organization, we believe that humans are working, right? And when we believe humans are working, we really need to have some kind of flexibility as per the situation. We should not be too much rigid. See, don't mark me wrong. I'm not saying that the organization should not have any rule and regulation. I'm not saying that. I'm simply saying that they should not have too much rigidity. If required, it should be flexible. It should be flexible so that we can remove the barriers in communication and people can communicate their problems, their grievances, their ideas, their emotions with the people around them. And if Rigidity is going to be there. Sorry, people don't share things when or people don't communicate when rigidity is there. So these are some of the organizational barriers which are being imposed from the end of organization. Moving further, the last category of barriers is personal barrier. Personal barrier, it is commonly known as individual barrier also. 71% of employees believe that their leaders do not spend enough time communicating goals and plans. Okay, forget about communicating goals and plans. I'm simply talking about they don't feel like communicating, right? Because that's the important aspect, communicating. Fine. Yes, it is the attitude of superiors many a time. Because they might feel like that, uh, oh, I am superior. How can I go and ask my person that how to solve this problem? How can? See, what is an attitude? It is basically a positive or a negative feeling, right? And if I'm going to have positive feeling about my people, of course, I'll be communicating more with them. I'll be asking them. I'll be probing them. I'll be inquiring with them. I'll be discussing with them. Rather than inquiry, I'll be discussing things with them, right? If I'm going to have a negative attitude, negative feeling, sorry, I won't feel like communicating with you, sorry, right? So that becomes the difference, that attitude of superiors. In fact, I would also like to add with this subordinate, not only superior, it is also the attitude of subordinate, which tends to impact. How? Yes, I'll tell you. Similarly, the subordinate is having negative feeling about that senior and he feels, he or she feels, not feels like discussing things with him. Then what it is? It is a personal barrier. I know what is the message. I know which medium I should go for, but I don't want to communicate for my attitude, right? Apart from this, one more point linked with this attitude is lack of confidence. Why? Why I'm, I might be having some negative feeling? Because I don't have confidence in my boss or I don't have confidence in my subordinate. I don't feel like discussing things with him or communicating things to him because I don't feel like trusting him. So that is lack of confidence also. And not just this. In fact, there is one very important aspect of personal barrier or individual barrier, which is talking about lack of time. As a senior, I really want to communicate, but I am so engrossed into different activities that I am not able to communicate with you. I'm not able to come to you and ask you that, do you have any problem? I'm not able to come to you and ask you, do you have any other plan? So just because of lack of time, and it is for both, for seniors as well as for subordinates. Subordinate is also too much preoccupied with his work that he never gets time to go and discuss anything with his or her boss. So it is sheer lack of time, but that's a personal barrier. Why here I'm talking time as a personal barrier? Because 
it is you only who is not able to manage your time accordingly and that's why you end up having no time and just because you are not able to communicate things with your people fine so this these were the different barriers now as a manager your responsibility is to understand what are the barriers and then the second stage how you can remove these barriers because if barriers are going to be there communication is going to be distorted and if it is going to be distorted then what's the point in communicating better don't communicate right so as a manager you really need to understand that how you should go on for removing these barriers so that you can become wonderful manager yes there are certain strategies as i said that nurturing good relations between sender and receiver is one way that if your relationships are going to be good you will be able to communicate things more effectively and also if you are designing a meaningful and focused communication wherein you are not looking for any xyz uh, information which is not relevant and you are putting that information so that is more about designing meaningful as well as focused communication also looking after the language issue is again an important aspect which you really need to take care that how your translator works how you works how you are going to take different uh, languages for communicating with the people around the world not just this in fact you should focus on emphasizing on the feedback yes emphasize on getting feedback so that at that moment only it should be clear that whether the receiver is able to understand my message or not if not then i am going to design it again for him right sensitization of people at work is very important because until and unless people are not sensitive towards each other's need they are not going to communicate and that's one of the most important aspects so somewhere you need to make people more sensitive towards other people empathy develop empathy the more you are going to be empathetic remember your communication is going to be more strong also you need to remove whatever structural biases are there remove those structural biases look after that where you can add flexibility to the rules and regulations add that flexibility also ensures proper communication channel with this i also would like to highlight seven c's of communication to make your communication error free right to make your communication more impactful more effective yes it was francis j burgen who has given this terminology of seven c's that how you can incorporate all these seven c's completeness conciseness clarity concreteness correctness courteous and consideration in your message so that you can become or you can make your communication error free first one is completeness now when we say completeness you need to look for five w's that means why who when where and what see when i say completeness that says that your message should be complete and when you want to make a complete message go for these five w's you should know that why are you sending the message to whom you are sending the message when the message should be sent where it should be sent what you are going to put in the message if you are thoroughly talking about these five w's trust me your message is going to be complete and not just this another thing remember one thing many a times what happens we tend to omit the message and it tends to cast suspicious suspicions i will i will tell you how for example um, you are telling your supplier that okay we'll be telling you about the next consignment very soon now when we say very soon might be possible that your supplier is getting some indications that very soon you are not disclosing the dates might be you you are looking for some other suppliers so it might degrade or harm your relationship with the supplier so wherever you think that you should not omit the information and it might lead to suspicions don't omit put that information so that it should be clear in the mind of the other person and the other person should have the complete message 
also give extra when desirable not every time not every time for example if a person has joined your organization right and there is some uh, free membership club kind of thing working in your organization and he is writing to you that okay today is an event i would like to join this event now if you're replying back to this person and you are simply telling him okay yes on 16th of january 2020 or something like that some date you are quoting uh, and come at this time at this venue right no in this you can provide him with the information that what he will be getting benefits of that club membership how he can be more involved into this club that is going to be he is looking forward to so that's why i'm saying you can give extra but make sure when desired unnecessarily you should not give second aspect is making your message conciseness means specific conciseness means brief so to make your message brief you should try to eliminate the wordy expressions for example if i'm saying she is buying that desk for the executive i can simply say she is buying desk for executives i can remove that what's the point in putting that there apart from that if i'm using at this time i can also use now i hope you understand that we should use brief language right you should we should try to concise our message unnecessary wordy expressions is not required so eliminate that include only relevant material as i said that what is relevant what is required go for this five w's you will get to know right put only that information and that way is going to make your message concise also avoid unnecessary repetition now some people have this tendency if they are writing a thank you letter or if they are writing uh, some consignment letter they'll keep on repeating the phrases uh, send the consignment on time send the consignment on no not required fine people know their responsibility just tell them the date time venue that's it don't you need not to go for repeating again and again that in fact irritates the other side person fine so that is the second c the third c is about consideration right focus on you instead of i and we see learners focus on you is actually a good idea when you are uh, sending a message which is desired by the receiver but if it is an undesirable message don't go for the you attitude because therein you should avoid that but apart from that for sharing good news for sharing positive messages regular messages go for the you attitude also try to tell the audience benefit that what's the benefit if i'm sharing some information first i should tell you what's the benefit you people are going to get out of this information then only you'll get you'll be able to attract or you'll be able to make your communication error free also emphasize on the positive facts for example if i say right if i put like this your money is not going to be refunded if the um, product is uh, dirty not clean like this i can also say the product is going to be replaced if the product is not dirty fine so that is what is consideration i'm considering from the other person's point of view that how we can move on concreteness is about using specific facts figure you need to remove the vagueness from the message remove that vagueness go for put action in your verbs rather than saying that it has come from the management has taken the decision go for such kind of use active voice right moving forward you can have clarity clarity is use familiar words we can use words like pay or salary or remuneration now which is more common salary is more common pay is more common so rather than using remuneration i should go on for using familiar words sophisticated words should be avoided we should go on for effective sentences not big sentences we should go on for looking the effectiveness also you should go for the courtesy thank you please choose non discriminatory expressions the best man will win 
no don't use this say the best person will win fine so this is how courtesy is all about the last point is correctness so correctness make sure that your message is correct it is not wrong right level of language rather than the word join i should use participate so this is what is right level of language you should adopt for check accuracy of facts and figures and trust me learners these seven c's if you are following religiously you can remove most of the barriers from your communication so dear learners in this session i tried my best to cover and make you understand that what are the different barriers in communication also i discussed some of the strategies to overcome these barriers not just this in fact seven c's of communication were discussed and i hope that as managers you are going to incorporate these seven c's and these strategies for making your communication error free don't go for distorted communication thank you and happy learning Thank you.